Yo, what's up guys, Bajiri here. This is gonna be a very exciting, but kind of freaky, New World character update. So, we hit level 60 at last. It was a really fun journey. Um, I had a great time with it. It really uh, didn't feel like all that much of a grind. It really just felt like more of an adventure. That ultimately led us to uh, max level and uh, really enjoyed it. And I'm still looking forward to digging into the end game a little bit of New World, playing around with all kind of different builds. As we've done, you know, up until level 60, I think a lot of that will continue. It's just that we're doing it from sort of the max character level, but we have a lot, a lot of numbers to improve other than just our character's, you know, experience level. Um, like we have gear score to work on, we have professions to work on, we have PvP stuff to do. Um, but I do want to give you guys an update. Basically, uh, this is my character after hitting level 60 and then doing a few things um, at level 60 like that day. So we hit level 60 like that night or that day and then I bought like a few pieces of gear basically and farmed one item and that's where we're at right now. And then I played with my talents a bit, but we'll get to that. Um, the talents right now are, are very much a uh, experimental thing. You guys have seen my talents up until now, so you know what I've played up until this moment. But I am kind of curious about this kind of freaky build that, I, that I'm curious about. So anyway, um, this is my character level 60. Um, this also can be prefaced by, this is kind of what I recommend that you do at level 60. I'm not, a, I'm not an expert at endgame. Uh, I'm not an expert really at anything New World related. But what I am having fun with is sharing my journey with you. So just take all that information combined and let's roll. So what we got here, uh, basically what I did, like I said, I hit level 60 and I had some Marauder tokens saved up and I went and bought um, some PvP gear. So right now what I'm doing with my gear is I found that after testing light armor, medium armor, heavy armor, I think the best plan for me in my first set of gear with what I'm doing most is probably to buy the medium set. And I don't mean buy the entire medium set. Like, I mean, like, buy the set that gets me to min-maxed 22.9 medium, right? So I have heavy helmet, heavy chest piece, medium gloves, light pants, and medium boots. So just the easy way to think about it is heavy, chest, and helmet medium boots and gloves light pants now four out of, out of these five pieces of gear are the pvp set which i think is really really good i know there's like a big focus on trying to farm up your characters like gear score and you do that by right now people are like out farming elites and so what what you want to do is have higher and pro progressively higher and higher level gear like eye level gear drop for you which raises what people are calling your character's watermark but it's actually a high water mark right so like at what what is the highest item that has dropped for you so far and then you continue raising that and it may even be by gear slot i'm not sure about that but that's basically what you want to do is you want to farm gear so that high eye level drops which means that once a high once a new highest eye level has dropped the high water mark um, is applied at that eye level and then higher eye level can drop from there so that's what you do for farming eye level out in the world. Uh, crafting is a little bit different. Um, and obviously buying the PvP set is like a static eye level for now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's one thing that you could do to get higher and higher eye level. But the cool thing is that this PvP gear, even though it's only 520 eye level, is really, really good. Um, the fact that it gives you resilient, I think, is huge. You can get resilient on gear drops, apparently, which is cool. But the fact that you get uh, reduced critical damage... Um, by like almost 5% per piece is insane. And then refreshing is nice, reducing your uh, max cooldowns by percentage is great. And then the stats, obviously you can tune those into what you want. I think it's usually a split unless you buy the full tank constitution gear, which I did not do um, because the constitution full tank gear seems to mostly be a PV th PVE thing, right? Because it gives you like corruption resistance and stuff. And it's like, nah, I'd rather just have crit resistance. So I bought that gear. Uh, I will probably eventually want to buy like a full heavy, you know, set, a full light set, and by light, full light set, I obviously mean like, you know, light gear and then medium chest to have that. Because this build that I'm working on right now might even be best with light, um, but we'll see. Um, but that's what I bought. I made sure and swapped the uh, medium pieces to um, strength constitution. I'm just going to run and show you the, uh, if you guys don't know how to swap PvP faction gear, 
then what you got to do is you got to run all the way to your faction vendor. And so if you wanted to buy like medium, but you're like, yo, how, how does it have constitution and strength on it? I thought it was dex. So you buy whatever piece of gear you want my blade, my life. from your vendor. Your next and then you buy this item right here, right? For, for me, it's barbarian. But for you, you might want dex strength. You might want um, intelligence and constitution, right? So like you might want different stats, but you buy the seal that is appropriate for your for your piece of gear, and then you take the piece of gear that you bought, like these uh, Dex Constitution gloves, with your gladiator little barbarian seal. You take it over here to the like you know whatever uh, is the appropriate station for making your gear, and then it'll be right here. It'll say like you know craft the, the PVP piece that you want, and all it is is just your PVP piece, and then the little barbarian seal, and you craft it for free. Well, I don't know if it's absolutely for free, but you know what I mean. You craft it, you don't require any other mats, and then it just turns the gear into the stats that you want based off of the little token that you bought. So, pretty simple, good stuff. That's how you change stats on gear. And so that, that's a really, really good way to start off. Plus, you're doing PvP, you're having fun, you're contributing to your faction's uh, strength and influence in certain areas, um, which is pretty cool. And so that's what I'd recommend is go ahead and buy this gear. That's at least what I did gets you a really good start uh the weapons are really expensive i don't have the weapons yet but i do have these uh i have the frostforge warhammer which dropped from the dynasty shipyard and then i bought this thing uh before war i was i sorted items by keen i want to i want to get crit and then i saw one that had refreshing move which is great um gem socket obviously because it's epic and then it had strength constitution i would rather have full strength but strength constitution is better than like strength and focus or something. Some random thing that other we you know weapons can drop with. And it's 537 eye level, so this thing packs a punch. It has a chance to crit. It makes my cooldowns come back up faster if I'm able to attack, so that's pretty nice. I think the attacks should actually have to land in order for you to get credit for it, but that's okay. Uh, anyway, it's a pretty pumper weapon, so it's a good start. Um, and you'll notice I put opals in my heavy weapons. I don't think opal in a hatchet is as good, because I feel like you're... you're your swing combo makes your stamina go back to full like before it's over so i think maybe like low health damage like when your enemy's low health it like executes because that's a talent that uh hatchets have anyway that'd be kind of cool um but anyway i like opals for the for the uh two handers because you can do like a swing swing well you should dodge first swing swing dodge swing swing dodge and then you're always going to be getting that like plus 12 or plus 15 or whatever uh, percent damage you have based on your gems level. You're always gonna have that with these heavy weapons, right? And you're not gonna always have that with a hatchet. So I like opal for heavy weapons. Um, just so you know. And in terms of the gems for my, uh, my actual gear, I feel like you fight a lot of melee swinging dudes, but I feel like the thing that's really, like, busted and the thing that everybody's gonna be using are, like, frost gauntlets, fire stabs. Those are the things that, like, pack a biggest, the biggest punch. So I and you can you can sort of avoid positionally physical damage sometimes and only so many physical people can hit you because they're just like, you know, stacked on you. But anyway, I feel like what needs to be mitigated for me the most in like war and the, the duels I struggle with the most are going to be the frost gauntlet things. Um, frost gauntlet is beyond busted, man. Like not only is it the strongest weapon in the game, it also just like lags out wars and stuff at the, at the moment. So um, they're going to take a look at that. So expect hopefully some frost gauntlet uh, tuning in the future, but until then, and maybe even after then, likely, uh, I like elemental damage reduction more, so I have, uh, like, not insane gems in here, but I have, like, level, like, I think it's tier 4 malachites, which give you a little bit of elemental, a little bit of physical damage absorption, I have that in, like, every piece of gear that can have it, um, including my ring and my jewelry. Now, the necklace, I just bought this off the auction house, because I was wearing this for the entire game. <laughs> Which is like good, but I mean, like I need to, I need to find something different. Um, so I just went and had bought this one. Just it was very cheap. It had a little bit of strength on it. Uh, it had arcane damage absorption, which I don't take a lot of arcane damage, I don't think. But I, but it did have slash protection. So I'm like, all right, that'll that'll do. Just bought it before the war. Um, and that's what I'm rolling with right now. Ultimately, there is a quest line. I believe it starts with this. There's a quest line up here in Shattered Mountain that I think gives you an insane necklace. So I'm gonna do that. Um, but we already made a video about where ill-gotten gain drops from, right? Good old, good old Harold, the, the, the mind master Harold, whatever his name is. He drops this bad boy. You can check out that video on my channel if you haven't seen it yet. This, however, 
Memory of Antonio is an insane ring that you can socket with whatever thing that you want. It gives you 18 strength. You deal more slash damage, and it gives you, uh, you know, 8.8 .8 chance to crit. So right now on my character, I have 18% chance to crit just off of two items, right? Just off of my my axe, and this. So almost a 19% chance to crit. And axe scales so hard with crit. So even though pe people in PvP gear will have a reduced crit damage, it's still awesome to crit. <laughs> it's still really cool. So that's what I have. And where you farm Memory of Antonio is up in Weavers. It's like right outside town. Not not Weavers, sorry, uh, Monarch. And not Monarch, Morningdale, of course, right? So you basically just walk out of town and go up here to Gera's Curse and you farm Antonio Gera. He just spawns here every couple minutes. Farm that bad boy till he drops the ring and then you're set for a while. So just keep that in mind. And if, and if you don't know where to farm Ill-Gotten Gain, I'll show you that too. That is... Where, where is that one up in... Uh, that's not Morningdale. It's not Evans Scale. It's in Eden Grove. It's right here in the lower mine. But I made a video about that too. So those are those are pretty easy farmable items. I mean, it's just like you just got to get them to drop. So um, I put on a luck set. You should be saving some gear with luck on it, by the way. Just in case you want to farm items like that. It might help a little bit. It might help later on too. But I have gear with luck on it. I don't know if I have a full luck set right now. Uh, but I have a shield with luck. That ring with luck that you get from a quest. I have pants with luck. I think I need to go pillage my, uh, my storage and find some boots with luck. But I have a helmet with luck. I have some gloves with luck, so I just need a chest and uh, some boots with luck on them. I also have luck on my bags, on one of my bags at least. We'll have to get some uh, better bags and get more luck on them bags. Um, but yeah, so stacking luck is going to be a good idea for farming, for the eye level farming and for those particular pieces that you want as well. Um, that's pretty much where my gear is at at the moment. Uh, so it's looking okay. We have some improvements. Shout outs to my, my boy White Knight once again for making me some some Ori tools, man. Those are beast mode. Um, that's where my tools are, but yeah, I, I definitely am going to need to get some more bags. Uh, we got a little bit of gold laying around, so we'll see what we can do about that. But yeah, big bags would be swell. Um, and we have the necklace that I'm going to get. And that, in terms of my stats, to move to the next thing, my stats, ultimately, once I get that necklace, and, one, and, I, and I think I'm going to I'm gonna need to... Uh, I'm going to need to get my weapon to be a full strength up, I think, in order to complete the stats that I want. Um, but ultimately, I'd like to be like 200 strength to get uh, extra damage on CC targets. And I'd like to get, uh, I don't really need much more than 200 constitution. Because the 20% increase to armor is nice. I don't really need a one minute cooldown uh, reduced damage on one hit when I'm full health. I don't really need that. I um, don't really need these. I mean, they're cool for sure, but I don't really need them. Uh, but what I want to do is 200-200, I think. That'll be good for the medium armor and heavy armor. Heavy armor, you could start to put more points into strength and less points into constitution if you wanted to, but I think the armor and the fact that it scales with your health is really good, and I think that you at least want 150 for minus 10% crit damage taken. So I think 200-200 is like a good place for me to be for strength. I haven't looked into dex very much. I think dex, a huge investment of 50 points for 5% chance to crit doesn't really seem worth to me, especially when I use... You know, two weapons that don't even scale with dexterity most of the time. Uh, when you use hatchet, yeah, maybe they scale with it a little bit, but I don't know. I'd much rather just have 200, 200, um, and that's probably like a good place to be. If you wanted to go more for light armor and constitution, you could, I guess, but I think that that's damage on CC targets, slowed, stunned, rooted, uh, and that's that's just good stuff. Because um, sometimes you don't even you're not even the one slowing them, right? Like it's just a war. They're slowed. That you just get they just get chopped. So hitting this break point would be great. I don't really want to respec again to get it. Because I think once I have a full damage, like a full strength weapon, and I have that necklace that gives me full strength, then we're going to be able to break this really easily, and my constitution will be in the right spot too. So that will be good. That will be good. Um, in terms of weapon mastery, uh, my Warhammer is the same as the video that I made in the past, I believe, but here it is. Um, I changed up my hatchet build because I don't... Infected throw seems really good. It seems cool. It just... The animation takes forever to go off, and so I'd rather just use Rending Throw. And honestly, Rending Throw, adding a bunch of damage, um, like absorption reduction, is very powerful anyway. I don't think I need this talent, though. So what I'm going to do with my last talent point, i got to figure that out still. I can either go 5% crit really easily, debuff removal well, on low health. I don't know if I like that. Maybe want to... Like, this one doesn't really worth it because the math doesn't work out to make this an advantage at all anyway, I don't think. Um, I don't know about 
light attacks generating stamina because you don't really need stamina like when you're attacking anyway because it regens so fast so maybe some low health cooldowns i don't think that's that's probably like a pve thing so i'm not really sure where to go with my last talent in this tree but uh this setup right here is really good i like this a lot a lot of good damage scaling um the hatchet has a, a whole bunch of like increased like it like it has some powers like it has some powers off light attacks has some powers off heavy attacks it has the fortify off light attacks it does increase damage for enemies around you which is this is crazy it does increase damage when uh things have a debuff and you put a debuff on your on it on enemies yourself with a uh, rending throw you have so many cool options here um hatchet is crazy it's just kind of short range but yeah i gotta figure out what i want to put my last talent point for hatchet um now here's the freaky thing right so you guys know the build that i've been doing for great axe i showed you that build um it's a good build i'd say it might be the meta build this one is kind of freaky so keep in mind this is very experimental it is not necessarily a recommendation it's a build that i kind of just whipped up while i was testing stuff out and i don't really want to spend any more azoth so i'm not going to respec out of it for the purpose of the video <laughs> but it is potentially kind of interesting so do you notice anything about this build that kind of stands out maybe two things that are related to each other the thing about this potential build is that it doesn't even take charge at all so this is freaky i feel like charge obviously is a gap closer uh in war it's actually a really good gap creator you physically just run in and then when you're low health you charge out um which is nice to be able to survive in war but i find that sometimes the charge like if you actually charge at somebody you don't even hit them um and i think that one of the things that i like is sticking to a target and then combining that idea with death wish i'm curious if you really need a charge at all uh, i think you probably still do i think charge has tremendous utility but i'm i'm curious enough about this idea that i'm going to give it a try so you actually take like full points in reap so reap is going to be like your gap closer um you take all these all these awesome passives that you usually do down into bloodlust did i say death wish same idea uh but it's bloodlust um you take all these passives you don't take these two passives right i don't really ever heavy attack with uh great axe but um you usually take these talents just because you take something mauler's resolve would be really good too but sometimes i don't really like i don't know I might want to put a point there at some point uh but you'd have to drop something else for Mauler's resolve like maybe this or something but anyway uh you actually take maelstrom right so this is another one of those things this this maelstrom ability does cause a small pull right just a little bit and then so you have it being increased range you have it absorbing all projectiles which is kind of cool and then you have it do another attack at the end. So you're having two abilities that cause pulls that do an extra attack, and then you have grab well still, which is important. Um, I am kind of curious though if I could like sacrifice points in gravity well to put a point in Mauler's resolve because that is a that is pretty nice. You do get like an extra dodge once you get low health, and that extra dodge can be pretty prime, especially because you don't have any more any mobility from uh, charge. But the 10% 10, 10 fortify is also kind of nice. Just just more damage reduction but yeah this is something i'm probably going to test out today in war i think i don't think you need a charge for pve at all by the way so you don't you don't need to take this so that's that's an easy talent to cut for pve but this one is like the idea is like people can't get away from you and i'm going to test that idea that's the theory is just all this stuff to just control other people's movement rather than controlling your own right so reap into an attack and then you can maelstrom if they dodge like if they dodge out of your reap then ideally, wrong weapon. Ideally, you like maelstrom them back in, but you might have to like dodge at them in order to do that, right? But they're on a they're on a pretty similar cooldown. And if you're able to chop and you know get your cooldowns back up faster, then you could actually be a, a real nuisance in, in like a in a back line. That's usually what I do in war, is I go and attack their back line. So you could be a real nuisance. They, they, they dodge roll and you just hop after them one time and then you they maelstrom again and then you can throw gravity well on top of that or you could honestly just throw gravity well down and then do that combo and they really can't move and that might be really powerful in war like when when you have like your team 
then you identify a healer or a, or a squishy you know getting them in a grab well whether it's yours or somebody else's and then just like pulling them in and just dusting them that might be an immense amount of burst and that you can do that combo you see the cooldowns they're all kind of like a similar cooldown so that could be pretty fun that could be pretty cool so i'm gonna test that out today in war i'm gonna maybe i'll have some videos about that to, to show you guys to see if you like it to see if uh, we like it as a team <laughs> but we'll see um that's kind of where i'm at at level 60. i think my plan right now once again is to probably do a little bit of elite farming maybe see if we can get in a few of those dungeons uh definitely go around the map and do some quests to get myself some uh some nice items just to bolster my level 60 character uh with this necklace there's also quests that if you do all the like the side or the the side missions in these zones it unlocks the ability for you to do a quest for a legendary that's a 580 eye level weapon um uh, and 580 eye level sounds insane um i am kind of curious though uh what this like what the little uh like secondary stats on it are because i think a lot of it's probably pve related and i wonder if that like weapons like this that have extra crit and i wonder if like pvp weapons that have extra crit and then has enchanted damage uh, might still be solid for pvp but we'll see we'll see there's a lot of questions a lot of stuff to be excited about for new world endgame um this is pretty much just like prep for the next phases but i've had a lot of fun with the journey on the way to 60. very excited about the the grind uh post 60. definitely want to see pvp continue to pop off in this game um i absolutely would love to see arenas in this game i think the the future of new world is very very bright and very very wide open um and i'm pumped to be able to play and share the content with you guys here on youtube and of course on stream every day uh streaming new world uh pretty much every weekday right now I don't usually game on the weekends um but in case we have some wars something like that unless we have wars might, might hop on for a little bit but uh, that's where we're at right now thanks so much for watching these updates if you guys enjoy them absolutely be sure to give them a big thumbs up leave a comment uh, subscribe enable notifications the works um, that really makes a huge difference in terms of helping the channel grow helping these videos grow helping us meet more people who would be into our content just are unaware of it so so cool to meet new peeps and if you guys are new to the channel welcome more on the way more games and gains <laughs> anyway appreciate the love thanks for checking out this video we'll see you guys in the next one peace